Greetings, gentlemen and ladies. I am the old school game snob, aka AJ Dare, and today we are going to be talking about flipping God's Unchained NFT collectible cards for a profit. So I have been doing a little bit of this over the last oh six months or so. Uh, I've made a few good purchases and actually sold for some good prices here. This is one of the better ones here. I had Jersemi Freya's Spear, which I sold for $389. I picked that one up for $17 six months ago, and I flipped it three months later for $389. Wildfire was another example of this. I sold this one for $216. I initially picked up Wildfire. Oh, what did I pick it up for? I picked it up for $23 bucks right down here. Um, so here's an example, you know, it's just an example of what you can do. Dionysus the Bountiful, I sold for $853, I picked this one up for about $500. Um, so yeah, this is not even a huge time frame either. Like, like I say, this is about six months ago, flipped it three months later. To, to do this really well, to do this successfully, you have to be a Gods Unchained player because flipping cards in the Gods Unchained uh, game is really all about knowing the meta of the game, knowing which cards are sought after, knowing which cards are difficult to get, knowing which prices might be good, high or low for a particular card, speculating on which cards may become more valuable over time. Some cards, in some cases, get buffed over time. Like this is a good example, the Wildflower card. When I picked this up <clears throat> at 23 bucks right down here five months ago, uh, it was given a buff a little bit later, and suddenly everybody wanted this card, and it shot right up to 200 bucks for this for this particular card. Now this card has since been um, min, uh, since been put into the the forge rather has been released, and this is a core card. And so buying and selling timing is really important. Uh, so for example, the Warmonger Smith here, uh, I sold him for 250 59 bucks. He's currently worth 17 dollars. Why? That is because when the Forge was um, released, all core cards suddenly became a lot more abundant on the marketplace and the scarcity diminished a lot. Now, when you're buying and selling Gods Unchained cards, you should know a few things. Number one, the Genesis set, the Trial of the Gods set, the Divine Order set, the Etherbots, and the Promo sets. Those are all no longer available for purchase uh, unless you use the open, uh, the open secondary market like Token Trove or the Immutable X marketplace. These are all owned by players now. You cannot get these anymore. The core cards, on the other hand, you can always get by playing the game. These cards are given to you. The more you play the game, the more cards you get. And so consequently, core cards, uh, as you can see here, uh, once, the mar once the forge opened up and players could mint and sell these cards, uh, even though the forge was open like a year or a half prior to this, and there was like a few of these available on the market that you can buy and sell, um, once they became more abundant, once the forge opened up, the price of these dramatically dropped. And for that reason, I tried to sell all of my valuable core cards uh, in that time period. So Managarmar, Moonhound, I picked up for about 150, sold for 400, and the same is true of the Warmonger Smiths. Um, so if you're, if you're, here's the strategy. Basically, here's here's my strategy for buying and selling cards. If you look at something like Genesis. Right. Let's take a look at Genesis. Let's see here. How do we get here? Okay. Let's take a look at the Genesis set. This is the first set ever released. Uh, the first, you know, main set, major set ever released. Uh, and if you look at Genesis, something like Underbrush Boar, which was pretty common and pretty cheap back in the day, this was selling and buying for a dollar, a dollar. It was buying and selling for around a dollar, three dollars for a long time. It even shot up for around twenty dollars. But now this card is selling for $90. So what if you speculated back in the day about, uh, yo, what is this, December, I think? And so this is like a year and a bit ago, a year and three quarters ago. Uh, what if you were speculating on Underbrush Boar back in the day and you bought up a hundred of these, right? Uh, and now, you know, you paid a hundred dollars for them at the time and now they sell, sell for for an, almost a hundred dollars each. What's a, what's a hundred times a hundred? Is that a uh, hundred? No, that's like 10,000. I don't know what that is. That's quite a lot more profit. That's what that is without doing math. Um, and you just see this all over, right? You see this all over. Gloam Druid, another great example. Uh, Gloam Druid, a dollar back in the day. Uh, and you can even see this more recently with some of the Trial of the Gods. Now, the Trial of the Gods was the second set released. And uh, back in the day, something like uh, Neferu, something like Neferu uh, would have been 
selling and buying and selling for around $50. Now she's up to about $150, so she's roughly tripled if you bought a bunch of Neferus back, you know, even uh, even how long ago was it? Not even that long ago, right? So, the, so we're looking at April the 23rd here of, of actually one year ago. April 23rd, no, of, yeah, no, yes, no, yes, <laughs> no. We're looking at, I think, six months ago. April, May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, we're looking at yeah, we're looking at six months ago. I think here, six or seven months ago. So you buy Neferu at fifty bucks, buy a bunch of her, hold her, and now sell her for 100, 160, Give her another year to appreciate in value, and suddenly she could be worth you know five times more, ten times more. Um, and that is you know you just see that kind of all over the place. And this can be especially true when you're when you're looking at some of the lower value cards that are also very powerful. The wildfire was a really good example of that that we looked at a minute ago. But when it comes to buying and selling cards, it's really all about looking, it's all about knowing the meta. What are what are players playing? What new cards have been introduced into the game that suddenly make an old card that wasn't that good, that suddenly make it a lot better? Because it plays into the combination with different decks, like the Seder Hypnotist, for example. This might not have been that valuable long ago, right? 25 cents a card, right? Now we're up to $2 a card. Now this I know is quite a popular card in some sleep, uh, some sleep deception decks. Uh, uh, for example, this is basically a necessary card in a lot of those decks. And now if you know the meta and you know what players are playing and you know what powerful decks are, you might be able to anticipate and speculate that this Seder Hypnotist over time is going to be a, even a more popular card. Now there's a lot of these, one, this one available, there's 24,000. Uh, and so that one will have a harder time going up in value because there's a lot more sell competition. Uh, but if you look around at you know the scarcity of an item and you kind of evaluate you know where the uh, where the popular decks are, where the powerful decks are, you pay attention to the current meta. Sometimes you can get like an astronomical rise in a card for a while until the meta changes and the value of it drops potentially or you know balances out a little bit more. And so really paying attention, like really being a player, watching videos on Gods Chain, learning how to play, and uh, really understanding why decks are good across, why cards are good across all different gods and in, uh, all from all the different decks. Um, what I would not necessarily sec suggest is going in and buying Genesis cards. They've already appreciated a lot in value. Now you could probably do this and hold them, you know, as well, and they will probably also go up in value a lot. They probably will. Over the next year or two, they'll become more scarce as there's more players, and so probably these are going to even go up in value a lot more as well. But I believe actually a lot of the opportunity right now comes in getting what is currently the current deck available for sale, the Divine Order deck, right? Which is currently cheap, right? Like 58 cents for a shadow Tibian uh, Elephant. Tibian? Tibian Elephant. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that might be worth one day, but I know Shadow is five times more uh, expensive basically than a meteorite give or take kind of depends on the market and now people don't necessarily play this a lot uh, so it's not really a popular card so it's super cheap right now but what would happen if the before the balance patch finishes for divine order what if what if the developers are like yeah nobody plays that we get we got to give it a little buff to make it a little better suddenly this card gets a little better and it becomes worth 10 times as much Right, so you can buy based on speculation of what, where, where the value of cards might go if the balance of of gameplay changes, and say, okay, why, well, so you know, toss ten bucks into that, get ten cards out of it, you know, you spend five bucks, but if that suddenly becomes worth a hundred x, right, because you, this gets a big balance buff, right, then then that's a that's a pretty small risk to potentially get a whole bunch more, and and eventually that's probably going to be worth more anyway. You know, you might double, triple, quadruple, five x it. But in the meantime, if it does become one of those more valuable cards, you know, you buy in and you and you sell out potentially for a whole lot, a whole lot more. And that is that is kind of flipping in a nutshell, right? So knowing your decks, knowing what the meta is, studying up, you know, potential upcoming changes on cards. Uh, I actually recently did a little speculation before the before the drop mana garmer moonhound which is currently you know hardly worth anything this used to be one of the most expensive cards in the game right around 570 dollars before the forge opened and then there became a whole bunch for sale it drove the price down a whole bunch but right now the problem with this card is it is 4-3 i saw some speculation saying that this might become a 3-4 uh, yeah no a 3-4 you know adjust those stats around or was it something like that right the problem with uh, a three creature a three health creature at three mana is that he's very easy to clear. Four doesn't seem like a lot more health, but it is surprisingly 
more difficult to clear. So if you can get this to be sticky for one round and be able to use its skill, use its uh, use its uh, advantage, refresh three mana gems, that's a huge advantage. And if that suddenly switched to 3-4 instead of 4-3, I would estimate the value of this card would potentially massively increase in value, right? We might have $20 that goes up to 60 or something, right? There's actually not even that many of these, 751. Uh, so, you know, even though the, their price is pretty down right now, there's not that many of these, and it is still a good card, even without that little switch around. But if we did get that switch around, that would be that would make this card huge. Every nature deck would play this card. And so really knowing the game, really understanding why cards are good, where they're not good, really can help you to understand which cards to potentially uh, buy into because they might get buffed later or just because you know they're good over you know they're they're just good solid cards and they are you know eventually will increase over time as scarcity increases as player base increases and that's why i would also say like i say the core cards are very abundant I was using Mana Garmer as an example of that sort of switch that could possibly happen that would increase the value of the card, but core cards are very abundant. They will likely uh, not gain a lot of value, I would say, because players are constantly getting these and minting these. Um, so the core cards are maybe not the best cards to flip. Um, that being, you know, so you kind of want to look at the at the current uh, of like oh, official paid decks, the, the decks you need to buy or win from the weekend ranked event. So hey, yeah, that's a look at flipping Gods Unchained. Uh, I've done it kind of very casually and accidentally made uh, some money at it. Uh, now that I've actually seen it work, I'm looking at it a lot more closely, thinking about, all right, well, now, well that's very interesting. What else, what else can I, what else can I flip around here, right? So, all right, hope you guys have enjoyed this video.